Thank you very much. Uh, just changing pace a little and returning to the panel discussions around the uh, transition that we're going through around energy and a key component of that is lithium. Lake Resources is very much focused on lithium, but we use a different approach to produce a consistent high quality product. I will be making forward looking comments. We produce a clean lithium product. We heard in the panel today the importance of a consistent high quality product. It's what battery makers are looking for. And we also heard in this morning's panel the importance of genuine ESG outcomes. In this case, lower carbon, low water usage, low land impact. And the only way to deliver a consistent clean product and to do that with better ESG outcomes is to use a new technology in the development of large world-class lithium brine projects in the lithium triangle of Argentina and Chile. We've gone down this path with a group called LILAC out of California. They use a very well-known water processing method called iron exchange. We aim to be in production in 2024, large project, debt funded to 70%. That's how we hedge our interest rate issues because this is going to be 11 year debt priced at around three to 4%. And we're also coupling that with major offtake MOUs including Ford Motor Company and, Japan, and uh, the major uh, players in Japan. So we're in the uh, Lithium Triangle. We've got four projects. Our flagship is Kachi, which is down the road from uh, Livent's operation. They've been producing now for 25 years, so we're in the right area. And we have three other projects that we're advancing this year so that we can follow up after our first project. Large property position, all put together six and a half years ago. This is what uh, the salt lakes look like here. If you haven't seen one, they pretty much all look the same. It rains once every year, once every five years. It could be in Death Valley in California or down here. They pretty much all look the same. What's important is what's underneath the surface. You've got sediments that are full of this salty water, a brine, and dissolved in that is the lithium, and that's what we aim to extract efficiently. We're using a process called iron exchange it's extremely well-known water treatment method. The only thing that's different here is it's just been adapted for lithium. It hasn't been done before because there was no economic driver to do so. Now, as I mentioned, battery providers need a consistent high quality product and end users don't want to see a repetition of what happened with uh, internal combustion engines. They want to see a cleaner, greener future. And so we're using iron exchange just adapted for lithium. And so as the brine comes out from underneath the surface, instead of going into evaporation ponds, it goes into these tanks or modules for three hours. The lithium gets stripped out of the brine at room temperature. We can put it back where it comes from, which is why it's got a low water usage. And then uh, we take that uh, lithium on these iron exchange beads, strip that, produce lithium chloride, and then those beads are available to be used again. And you just do it over and over again, every three hours, 24-7, uh, uh, processing water to produce lithium chloride that then gets converted into lithium carbonate. The rest of the flow sheet is exactly the same as other participants in the, uh, in the sector, but we have a much higher recovery, almost twice uh, regular traditional processes, far more sustainable, and yet still cost competitive and most importantly scalable. We released a pre-feasibility study in 2020 at uh, 25,000 tonnes per annum. In January we announced that to be doubled to 50,000 tonnes per annum. This is going to be one of the largest projects standalone in South America uh, for lithium carbonate production and the only one producing a consistent high quality product with ESG benefits. That's a quick mock-up of what the plant would look like if you visited other uh, lithium carbonate producers in the lithium triangle, they'll look like this, except letter A is where we have these ion exchange modules instead of 20, 30, 40 square kilometres of evaporation ponds. So instead of what you see there, evaporation ponds, all of that water in a hyper-arid environment going into the atmosphere, we return virtually all of that back to its source. 
So we're not talking here about greenwashing. This is orders of magnitude improvement in ESG. And that's why we've been able to attract major partnerships with the key players in the sector. First of all, Hanwha fronting for Japan Inc. They're always highly credit rating. They've been a little late to this sector, but they always want high quality. They're also the cutting edge of technology. And on the other hand, Ford Motor Company, the US is now this calendar year very keen to actively participate in the electric vehicle and energy transition. And Ford is a major producer of light utilities or SUVs, and they want to do that now with the electric vehicle. You might have seen on April 26 the F-150 Lightning roll off the, um, uh, roll off the um, supply chain uh, in Michigan, and uh, these are going to have this sort of high quality product going into their batteries in the future. The economics here are quite robust. Under the pre-feasibility study using a low uh, uh, lithium carbonate price of $15,000 a tonne, this was showing uh, throwing off a quarter of a billion US dollars in EBITDA uh, per year. Now that it's going to be doubled, and we haven't released these numbers formally yet, now because that's going to be doubled, and if we use, a, say, a lithium price of $30,000 a tonne, that's about half of spot, because spot is tracking uh, between $63,000 and $79,000 a tonne at the moment. If we use half that number, this is going to be throwing off between $1 and $1.2 billion US dollars of EBITDA every year. That's our current market cap. We'll be doing that for 25 years. And uh, it'll have a post-tax NPV well north of $6 billion. If we use spot pricing, this actually has an IRR in three digits. Um, so highly robust, yet still um, a low-cost producer. One of the reasons, as I mentioned before, is the project finance support. Uh, we're receiving support indicatively from the UK Export Finance, right here in London, together with Canada's EDC, and they'll work with two or three banks to deliver 70% of the financing, uh, which will be a, a capex number somewhere north of 900 million US. and. Um, and then we couple that with most of the equity we have in place, plus some of the equity coming from off-takers to deliver this project. Uh, next quarter, we'll have the DFS out. Uh, we will have a demonstration plant operating on site quite soon. That will then trigger the financing together with the off-takes that we're finalising. And we're aiming for construction at the end of this year or uh, early next year. Then we have other projects that we're developing, Oleros and Kalchari. This is next to current uh, projects that are about to go into production with, uh, by Gang Fung and Lithium Americas. We're actually right next to them. We're also uh, next to Orchem Oracobre, a little further north, which we're drilling. And we aim to advance one of these up to pre-feasibility study by the end of this year or early next year. So we've got the next one available. Uh, the banks are keen to support it. The offtake. Uh, participants are keen to get involved, uh, and we aim to be a multi-asset producer. At uh, the end of March, we had 111 million Australian dollars at bank, that's about 80 million US. Uh, we aim to have another 60 million Aussie uh, next month in June, because there's warrants, options that are in the money, and uh, as they get converted in the middle of June, that'll add another, 100 and, uh, another 60 million. Uh, our technology partner, Lilac, is looking to put 50 to 70 million US towards a project, and then the rest of the money will probably come from off-takers. Uh, so we're quite well financed for this first project. There is an opportunity at the moment. Uh, we have suffered, like others, in our share price being down recently, um, but there's an opportunity to get involved. And so just in summary, high purity lithium, that delivers a high uh, price, uh, major ESG benefits, and our aim to be an independent producer of the top three lithium producers globally by the end of this decade. Thank you.